hello, hello. Here are 29 tips for Notion to make you more productive. Number one, in gallery view, use the arrows to go through the pages quickly. Let me show you what I mean. We're gonna make a gallery, gallery, new database, and we'll call this one blah, and we'll call this one, guess this, blah, blah. What I can do is click with these arrows up or down page. Look at that, that's pretty amazing. And there's a shortcut for it. To go forward, control shift J, and to go backwards, control shift K. Number two, there is a shortcut to create breadcrumbs. And it is super easy to do. You just do forward slash bread, breadcrumb. And you can put this absolutely anywhere you want in case you want to go back to a specific page. Number three, there is a shortcut for toggles. The other day I was watching a Notion tutorial and someone did forward slash toggle and wrote toggle and it just really annoyed me. So for those who don't know, just do this little symbol, space, and you have a toggle. Blah, 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 blah. It's that easy. Number four, create buttons to simplify your workspace. I've talked about this a lot in my Notion videos, but for those who don't know, you can create buttons, just do forward slash button, and then here you can get it to do a bunch of different stuff. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. But my favorite thing to do is to add a page to, and then we're going to click open page. So after it's added the page, we want to open up that page. So we have to select the database. So let's just call this database Notion Tips. Here, add page two. We're going to select Notion Tips. If it's not coming up in your most recent, it's another database that you haven't used in a while, then you can just search it up here. But I'm just going to select Notion Tips. And then what I wanna do is after a page has been added to Notion Tips, I want to open up that newly created page. So I'll click on new page added. And then here we'll say new Notion Tip. So now if I click on new Notion Tip, in here I can add blah, blah, blah and click away and look at that blah 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 has been added to this database. If you're a content creator, have a button for new video ideas. If you're a student, have a button for a new assignment or new homework or, or new lecture or whatever it is. Find today with one button. Again, the other day I was watching a tutorial and I saw someone using their calendar and they did something that slightly annoyed me. So they were back in the past like this and then to get to the current date, they were clicking on here when there is this lovely today button right here. And if you click on that, you jump to today's date. So utilize the today. It works the same if you're using instead of a month, if you're using a week, you can do the same thing here. Go back in time, click on today, go forward in time, click on today. If your database template is full width, the pages you create with it will also be. So I'll show you what I mean. In here, let's just create a new template. We'll call this example one. Sometimes my genius is it's almost frightening. And this is not going to be full width. So I'll view this. As you can see, this is not a full width. We haven't made it full width. So this is template example one. Then we'll create another one called example two. I'll make this full screen. And this one we will do full width. So now when we use these templates, so I'll click new and use example one. As you can see, it is not full width. But if we click on example two and I open that up, as you can see, it is full width. This is really useful to bear in mind if you're using templates. I guess that in itself is another tip. Use Notion templates. Change fonts. If you wanna change the font, just go to the three dots at the top and here you can choose from default, serif, or mono. Serif is very popular for those who care about the aesthetic of their Notion and mono is popular for, I, I don't think anyone uses mono. Tip number eight, I have two free playbooks. They are 100% free, they're really cool. One is about productivity and the other is about streamlining your work. You'll get one email delivered into your inbox over a few days for both of these. They're very good, I recommend taking them. The link is in the description. Tip number nine, you can download as PDF. Let's say for some reason you wanted to download this page. You thought, wow, this is a useful page right here. You just go to the three dots, then you can go down here and click on export. In here, you can export as a bunch of different things, but we want to export as PDF, or in this example, we're doing that. We can include the databases in current view and in default view. We can decide on whether to not include files or images as well, which is pretty useful. Page format, you can do letter A4, A3, legal and tabloid. You can play with a scale percent as well, which helps depending on the document that you have. And then you just click on export. This is really useful if you're doing invoices, If you, I mean for a bunch of stuff, it's awesome. Number 10, duplicate databases without the content. Let's say for some reason I thought this was the perfect database and I wanna use this again 
but just not have any of this content. Instead of duplicating this and then deleting manually all of these entries, that's gonna take a long time. We can just click on this six dots here, duplicate, and then select duplicate without content. And then here you can see Notion Tips, it's been duplicated, so it's added this one. Another one, another one, and another one. Just so it's not got the exact same name as this one, and there is no content inside. Tip number 11, you can add links to other pages. Now, what I've seen other people do is they'll write the word link or, you know, write whatever they want to write, then highlight it and click on link and copy and paste the link here. This works and is really inefficient. <laughs> what instead we're going to do is do forward slash link to page and there you can easily link to another page. Tip number 12, you can add descriptions to databases. If you haven't seen the video where I go through updates that Notion have done, one thing they've done is you can add descriptions to properties. So let's just do right click, duplicate and call this list, change the layout to a table view. Now let's say I wanted some more context for this name here. What I can do is click on it, then this little icon comes up, which we can add a property description. So if we click on that, we can write here, this is the name of the thing. So now if I'm looking through my database and I'm like, what is blah and blah, blah and blah, 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 I can hover over this and it says, this is the name of the thing. This is probably a feature best for people working in teams, but still really useful. You can quickly add a table of contents in Notion. Well, 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 how the turntables now, this is a feature that I haven't seen many people talk about. Let's say you have a few headers. So we'll just do a header two and call it blah. We'll do one down here called blah, blah. And then another header down here called, I'm sure you've guessed it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. At the top here, what we can do is forward slash, write table and do table of contents. So as you can see, it comes up with blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah because these are headers and they're interactive. So if I click on blah, blah, as you can see, it jumps down to the blah, blah section on this page. This is really useful if you're writing long documents, if you're doing SOPs or uh, honestly a bunch of stuff. Tip number 14, you can quickly search. If you're a big fan of searching for stuff in your Notion, let's make it easy for you. Use control or command P and look at that, you can start searching. Again, if you haven't seen my video where I go through all of this stuff, then watch that video. Again, link is in the description, highly useful. Tip number 15, use filters. If you have a database, you can use filters here and it is so useful. I'm just going to create a bunch of fake stuff and it's always blah, blah and blah, blah, blah. I don't know why I'm so uncreative. So we'll have this as multi-select, this one's blah, this one's blah, blah, this one is blah, 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 and this one is blah as well. Now let's pretend there's more than five things in this database, but what we can do is filter add advanced filter and search by only stuff relating to blah, a singular blah. So we change it to where tags contains and then we can select it only stuff relating to blah. And then only the stuff that has the tag blah is coming up. If you're like me and your databases are really long and extensive and they just have a bunch of stuff in it, using tags to search and filter makes it so much quicker to find stuff. Also a bonus one for filters, what you can do is filter and search by name. So if you know the name and you have a really long list, what you can do is just search for, oh, I think it's called example. And now you can see everything that's coming up with example as the name. So you don't just have to use tags and stuff like that. You can even search by the name in here, kind of like a control F or a command F, but just for names in databases. Tip number 16, create an SOPs document. Nothing else can save me. P. If you don't know what an SOP is, I recommend taking my streamlining course, but basically it is a standard operating procedure. And what you can do is I'll just create a new page in here, forward slash page, and we will call this SOP. Now what you wanna do in here is create a list of all of the stuff that you're doing or the stuff that you want to outsource. Everything! So I'll do an example for this channel. Step one, brainstorm video ideas. Step two, film the video. Step three, edit the video. Okay, highlight these turn them into header twos. Now we can do a table of contents. And then here under each of these, you'll write down a step-by-step -step of how you do each of these processes. This is A, to help you work faster for when you have to do it, or B, it makes it easier to outsource and get someone else to help you. Again, I go into detail about this in my audio mini course, Streamline Your Work Life. Again, the link is in the description. Tip number 17, see your database as a gallery with not done tasks and done tasks so in my headquarters template, I have this on the mobile HQ page because basically, I mean, right now, the notion on the phone isn't fantastic. 
So I've designed it in a way where you see tasks as a gallery instead of a list view, just because it looks better on the phone. Your defense, I've been working on my body, doing my burpees and it shows. And I'll show you how to do that. We'll take this as an example and we'll add a new property here and we'll just make it a checkbox. We'll call this done. So we'll tick in a few of these, example one and two. Then what you can do is click on these three dots here and we want to group by done. So now we can see all the stuff that we've done up here and all the stuff we haven't done. It might look a bit messy right now having these so large. So what we could do is click on this three dots again. We're going to change the property to A, show the done. So we want that first. And then we want to click on layout and change card preview from page content to none. Now, most likely this list will get very long. So we'll want the not done stuff to come up before this. So again, we could click on the three dots. We'll click back on group. And here we can just drag with these six dots, the unticked above the ticked. Click cross here. And now you can see, let's say we've completed done. I click that in and it moves down into the completed list. Again, this is really useful for using Notion on mobile. Tip number 18, change the icon of the database view. So we have this database. Here are our two views. We have the list view and the gallery view. Most of you know you can right click and rename. So here we could call it gallery in all caps. But did you know right here, this button here allows you to change the icon. So you can change it to whatever you want. Let's do an arrow. There we go. Okay. Tip number 19, you can add icons to templates in databases. So if we look at the templates we created before here, example one and example two, let's just open these up by clicking on the three dots and clicking edit. Then here we can add an icon to this. So it can be either an emoji or an icon, or you can even do a custom one. I'll just do this box here. So now when I click on new and it opens up here, you can see example one and it immediately adds the emoji to this template. Tip number 20, you can repeat tasks. So let's scroll down and go just so you know, by the way, quickly, this looks horrible. Obviously I make nicer looking notion stuff than this. This is just for the notion tips. These are examples. It's a mess. I know. Okay. But what we can do is repeat tasks. So I'll click on the down arrow here and click on new template. I'll call this gym, for example, close this, then click back down on the arrow. And here we can see Jim, click on the three dots and we can do repeat. So here we can choose when to repeat it. Do we want it every day, every week, every month? If you want details about this, I've made a separate video all about recurring tasks. Link is in the description. Tip number 21, use sync blocks. If you don't know what a sync block is, you are missing out. They are so useful. So let's say you want this blah, 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 blah. And you want it to show up down the page as well. What we can do is forward slash and write sync and then it comes up with a sync block here. We'll click on that. Now, as you can see, a red box comes up here. That means that it is going to sync whatever is inside of it. So if I click there and drag these in, these are now inside of the sync block. So what I can do is click here and do copy and sync. It's now being copied to the clipboard. So if I scroll down and paste command V, as you can see, the blah, 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 blah shows up down here. So now any changes that I do down here or up here will affect the other sync block. So if I write subscribe, which you should do by the way, uh, and then I scroll down, as you can see, subscribe has been put in here as well. Tip number 22, you can add audio clips. I can hear you. To do that, all you have to do is forward slash audio. And here you can see embed audio. You can embed from SoundCloud, Spotify, but the most useful is you can upload. So let's say you have your SOPs page. Let's go back to this one and you want some context for all of this stuff. You've sent this off to someone. What you could do is add an audio here where you're talking through everything that they have to do. It keeps everything in the one place and you will work much faster. You can easily share pages. This is very much a beginner notion tip, but if you don't know, you can easily click on share up here and you can share with people or you can publish the page. You could share with specific people by adding their email here, or you can publish the page and publish to web. So in here, you can do a bunch of different settings, including allowing people to duplicate as template, which is how people share their notion templates, which means that you can't make changes to this page, but you can duplicate this page and then make changes to it once you've copied it over. Kind of like if I were to send you a PowerPoint template, I still have the original PowerPoint template on my computer, but you now have a duplicate of it, which you can do whatever you want with. Tip number 24, there is a shortcut for creating headers. Now, as you saw when I wrote blah, 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 what I did was write forward slash header and then click on header two. That is taking way too long. We're efficient here. If we want a header, we, we don't want to take that long. So to do that, just do command option one thing. Or if it's a header two, just do command option two. Another thing. 
And as you can see, because they're headers, they automatically got added to the table of contents. Tip number 25, you can add spacing next to a database. Now Notion can be really weird and annoying about this stuff. Let's say you want this database next to this toggle. We can try and drag it, but it will not for some reason want to put it next to it and it's really annoying. What we can do is create some space and do forward slash and write column. Then we can create two columns for example. We'll drag the blah into there. And now we can drag this database into this space here. I don't know why it does that, but that is the workaround. Tip number 26, how to edit a button if it's broken. Now, Notion have actually fixed this recently, which is really nice. So, before, if you had two buttons next to each other, or multiple in a row, you couldn't actually edit it like you can now. So, now if you click that, you can see edit, we'll put three next to each other, and you can see you can edit it here. But if you still can't do that, then here is the workaround. You're most likely having this issue because the button is in a column. So, all we have to do is remove it from the column, you can edit the button, and then we can just drag it back. Tip number 27, you can mention a person in Notion. My name is Jeff. All you have to do is write, hey, I need your help. And then you do the at symbol. You can add a date or mention a specific person that you're working with. Again, super useful if you're working in Teams. Hi. Tip number 28, you can use relations to connect to another database. If you're not using this, please give it a go. It's super useful. I'm just going to take this database here and call it hello. Hello. Add a random item in here, item here. Then what we can do is connect this database, the Notion Tips database, to the Hello database. So I'll go to the list view, I'll just make this smaller, and add another property. And this property will be a relation. Now here, we want to select the database that we want to talk to. So we wanted to talk to the Hello database. Hello. So I'll click on that. Again, if it's not coming up in your recents, you can just search for it. And then here we can say, do we want it to show on Hello? And do we want a limit on it? I'm just going to say no limit and don't show on hello. Click on add relation. I'll close this. So now here in this column, we can relate to a specific item in this database. So the hello database, if I click on here, then the item here item shows up. So I click on that and it can be linked. So then I can click directly on this to open it up. And tip number 29, download templates to save yourself hours. If you're using Notion to be more productive, motivated and organized, then you will love my headquarters template. It's my all-in-one system that's been designed to get you to cut down on busy work and focus on actually making progress. Here is my full walkthrough video. Thanks for watching and subscribe.